A lot has changed, and not a lot has changed. This yellow building behind me is Vancouver's oldest building. It was the first post office, and then it became a library and a community center, and it was in Gastown until it got floated here to sit as a museum. And yes, you're right. I am scraping the bottom of the barrel for creative ideas of things to do and showcase here in Vancouver, but in scraping the bottom of the barrel, I found the City of Vancouver Heritage Registry, which is essentially just a long list of old buildings and old homes that have some sort of significant cultural or historical importance in the city. But there's also a few like really interesting, unique places on there that I wanna show you in today's video. Let's get started. And one of our unique places is the Toys R Us sign. Not because Toys R Us is bankrupt in the States, it's still an actual company here in Canada that has stores, as you can see, but because underneath it is the old Bomax sign. It's from an old car dealership that was here, and Toys R Us wasn't allowed to take down the sign because it's a protected heritage site. So they just slapped up Toys R Us in front of it, and I assume one day eventually that'll come down and Bomac will stand proudly again, or Toys R Us will go out of business and that will become a heritage site as well and they'll just both be on top. I don't know. We'll have to find out one day. Now this is one of my favorite homes in all of Vancouver ever since I was a kid, particularly because of the thatched cedar roof, which is very expensive to do. And in fact, it costs about $150,000 to $200,000 just to repair. And the whole house was protected by the municipal heritage rules stating that it had unique architecture or style to the house, which of course is its storybook cottage look. So these heritage designations really can save a little bit of character in our cities so that the whole place doesn't end up looking like this. Plus, it might just bring a smile to a young kid who's just passing by on King Edward here like I once was. So if you look through the whole list, it's a lot of buildings, a lot of very old, beautiful, historical, important buildings. But what I want to show you is what I didn't expect to find on the list, which is trees. Now, I don't mean they're protecting a certain species of trees. I mean they are protecting individual trees. This is the best version of a Japanese maple that we have in Vancouver. It is protected on the Heritage Registry. I know it doesn't look like anything special at the moment. It's winter. I'm sure if I come back in the spring, that'll be full of maple leaves. But what I do find interesting it's the only Japanese maple on the street, and the street we're on is Maple Street. Is that not big enough for you? Well, how about a giant sequoia? Sorry, buddy. That's a big, beautiful tree. Or maybe you want to get out of the rain and winter in Canada and go back to the warmer weather of California. You can come see this redwood. But it's at Point Grey Secondary School. It always feels weird filming around high school, so I'm out of here. I'm just filming a tree. Just you're filming a tree. Now let's talk about landmarks. And I'm not talking about the bandstand behind me, but I have two examples that show the varying degrees of importance of certain landmarks. The first one being this fountain behind me dedicated to Joe Fortes, a lifeguard here in Vancouver in English Bay that taught hundreds of kids how to swim and also saved hundreds from drowning. He was so beloved in the community that he has a fountain dedicated to him here, as well as an entire library and a restaurant. And on the other hand, we have these bronze lion statues downtown listed under category O for other. And the reason they're protected is left blank. So leave your conspiracy theories in the comments below. Okay, I got tired of filming in the rain, so today is clearly another day when it's much sunnier. But it all comes down to this. After scrolling through the whole list and showing you some of the interesting things, this was the most unusual thing on the list. The city of Vancouver has put on their heritage registry a single geological feature and it is this volcanic outcrop. And to the untrained eye this might just look like a single giant rock taking up the entire front yard of that house but really it has been here for thousands of years standing out different from all the other rocks in Vancouver and now it has made such an impact that it has been designated a heritage site to be protected and through that has saved this house from being turned into one of these condos. There are developments all around, development, 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 development. This house was bought by the development firm to be made into townhouses and condos. But because of this single volcanic outcrop, they weren't able to do so and this house has been protected because of it. So if you ever wonder the impact you can have on this world, just think of this single rock that was different from all the others 
and save this house from being turned into a condo. Pretty significant. So, as you can tell, I'm scratching the bottom of the barrel for Vancouver-based ideas, but I had a pretty good idea and it includes you. Since none of us can travel right now, I thought it'd be a great idea if we all went out into our communities, our neighborhoods, stayed within our cities, but filmed something that was interesting or unique or maybe even a famous place in the world that just happens to be close to you. And then submit it to me so I can put it all together in a future video, a global Hidden Gems video. Now I've put a Dropbox link in the description below this video. You can simply click that and be able to submit your videos there. It would be great if your videos could be about a minute long showcasing lots of different parts of it so I can put it all together. And if you want to put yourself on camera like I do to tell us about what's going on, that's perfect. But if you don't, that's okay too. Maybe just give some audio behind the camera so we can learn about what it is you're showing us. And then I'll put those all together in a future video right here. So you have one week from today to put your videos into the Dropbox link down below and then we can all travel virtually right here together. And on that note, I'd like to thank the sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. And if you don't know what Skillshare is, it's a wonderful online learning platform for curious and creative minds like ourselves. And with lockdowns continuing for the next little while, I thought now would be a good time to learn a new skill and a new way to showcase my city. So I thought, why not take a street photography course? So I'm taking a course called Cityscape Photography, Capture Your City Story by Trash Hand. It has nine easy modules to learn everything from scouting to long exposure photography to night shots to editing. With over 18,000 students in the course and almost a thousand reviews, I was able to make sure the course was right for me before spending time on it. And the best part about Skillshare is it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So if you click the link in the description down below, they're giving the first 1,000 of you a free Skillshare premium trial membership. So there's no harm, no foul, just good things there and they help to make these videos possible. So Skillshare, thank you. The whole point of this global Hidden Gems video is to get you outside, give you a purpose to your walk that day, something to look forward to, something to share with all of us. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It can be something strange, like simply having a tree in the middle of your lane and cars having to go around it. And yeah, you're right. There are a lot of trees in today's video. And to prove to you that it doesn't have to be something big, I decided I would show you Vancouver's smallest building as an example. It can be as unique, as interesting as that. I don't know how many square footage it is. I'll, I'll put it on the screen here. But that little doorway jammed between two bigger buildings is Vancouver's smallest building. So get out there, go for a walk, film something interesting in your neighborhood, and you have one week to submit it into the Dropbox link down below. And if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. I'm Mike, the channel is Downey Live, and I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. See you next Saturday.